everyone it's Lexi welcome to or welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna to be doing a highly requested video and that is everything that you need to know about dual enrollment um, I've had a lot of people ask me questions day in and day out about dual enrollment and college classes and how I'm doing it and everything so I just wanted to get everything set in stone I'm gonna go ahead and start off with how I did it and what is dual enrollment because if you're you know out of state you might not know what it is so for those of you who don't know what it is, dual enrollment is when you can take college classes in high school and get a college credit and a high school credit. So let's say I take um, French at the college. I will get a college credit in French and I'll get a high school credit. So yeah, um, most schools in Georgia offer this. I think all schools in Georgia, all high schools, you can do dual enrollment. Um, it just depends on which college offers it. Um, so yeah, the main misconception is what age you have to be to do dual enrollment. Everybody thinks you have to be a junior, which is not true. I'm a sophomore and I'm doing dual the enrollment. The reason why people think that you have to be a junior is because most juniors do it. And that's because most people do it when they're a junior because they have time and they have the transportation and all that stuff. Thankfully, my parents have a schedule to where they can work around mine just a little bit and they can take me to the college campus and stuff because I obviously can't drive since I am 15. So um, basically, I'm going to answer the most asked questions and one of them is, does it require transportation? Yes. So your school is not going to give you a bus to go there. Um, you're literally going to a college campus to take classes. So you kind of have you're on your own a little bit like you're not you know i've had people ask me like does the bus take you and i'm like no like you have to take yourself that's why people wait until they're a junior because that's normally the time when people turn 16 or they get their cars or whatever so they have their own transportation okay another reason why people think that you can only do it when you're a junior is because um what's it called most colleges require you to take the sat or act and most juniors take that so the college that i'm doing mine at does not require you to take the sat or act and i'm so sorry about the like you guys can hear my dad mowing the lawn but anyways um most colleges do require you to take that if you want to do the dual enrollment some don't so my, the college that i go to does not require me to take the sat or act so i did not take that um, so I took a different test, which is the AccuPlacer, and that is just a placement test, and it basically sees if you're eligible for the program or not, and it's super easy. They have practice tests online. So that is how I got into it and in 10th grade. A lot of people ask me, they're like, how did you do it? And I'm like, listen, it depends on the college. Some colleges do require you to be a junior. Some colleges don't. Another question that I get is, is it hard? I cannot stress this enough. No. For me, it's not. I take honors classes, so I'm used to rigorous things and fast-paced things and moving things. So if you're not, like, honors or taking, like, honors or AP, it might be a little bit more difficult for you. But if you're already used to fast-paced or rigorous or being on your own, then you're going to do fine. It all depends on your professor. I cannot stress this enough. My professors are so nice. And the way that you check... Your professors is on the website, ratemyprofessor.com. Um, in college, you get to choose who you want, okay? You get to choose what professor that you're going to have. So they have a website called ratemyprofessor.com. You can search up the professor when you're, look, like, when you're like looking to register for your classes. And it'll say like the professor, the school's name, and their rating. And students will give ratings on these professors. Please look at that. Do not just get a class and not look at the rating at all. I made sure that my professors had a four star rating or higher i made sure that the comments were good so that way you're good in the class so it's easy the comments on my professors were like oh they're super nice they're lenient they're it the class isn't that difficult and it's true i'm taking it right now i have over 100 in both classes knock on wood because i don't want it to go down and i'm taking college classes so i would definitely look at that website do not register for a class and like not look at that website because i'm telling you if you get a bad professor that's going to determine if your class is easy or not not the subject the matter of the professor is going to determine whether it's easy or not okay so the next thing that i want to go over is homework and everything and all that so for me i have a planner um i actually have it in my book bag and i would go get it right now but i'm not going to um <laughs> 
but for me i have a planner i would definitely recommend getting a planner and writing down all of your assignments in college classes normally professors will give you their syllabus at the very beginning of the class at the the very like the first day of class they'll give you your syllabus and that's all of your assignments for the whole entire semester get a planner and write down the dates for every single assignment yes it'll take time but it's so much easier than having to go look at the syllabus you can just go on your like your little like thing and see what you have that day definitely recommend that and another thing is that college professors do not play since they give you a whole syllabus on what is due and the day it's due they're, they're expecting you to do it because they're giving it to you like from the beginning you know what i mean um my professors are lenient like i said i have i don't know their grading policies on late work because i haven't turned anything in late thank god but i know it says it in the syllabus i just haven't read it yet um or i haven't read the late policy yet or i did on the first day of school but i forgot about that but yeah so um with that being said it's like listen like just keep in mind like you know what the homework and stuff because if you can't handle a high school class do not do dual enrollment you are genuinely on your own genuinely um like it's not like high school where like if you're missing an assignment the teacher is probably gonna be like oh like honey you're missing an assignment like are you gonna turn it in no college professors don't do that they put in a zero and they keep it moving they don't do that um even the lenient ones my professors are super lenient but if you don't turn in something they're not gonna email you about it they're just gonna put in a zero and assume that you didn't do it and that's that my schedule i'm gonna go over my schedule before um i end this video uh what's it called so my schedule i have two high school classes and two dual enrollment classes the reason why i can't do dual enrollment full-time right now is because i'm a sophomore and there are certain classes that i have to take as a sophomore that they do not offer at the college other than that i'd be going to the college for all four of my class periods and not the high school at all so basically i go to my high school for two class periods and then after those class periods i leave um i get off of my high school around 11 45 and i only have college classes on tuesdays and thursdays so not every single day am i going to my college classes um only on tuesdays and thursdays when i leave from high school i have to go to my college class so mondays wednesdays and fridays i just go home like i i literally just go home a lot of people think when you have a college class you have to go every day no it's it's a set day so my classes are on tuesdays and thursdays so yeah counselors all of that stuff because a lot of people are like oh my gosh my counselor sucks blah 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 okay so if you have a counselor that's like never there or can't help you or whatever i apologize because it, it is very stressful when you're like trying to do dual enrollment and your counselor is like not there and you're like listen like i just want to do dual enrollment but number one, you don't need your counselor for the first half of like dual enrollment processing. Go on the college website that you want to do dual enrollment at, look at their requirements and go through the sheets and the steps. You do not need your counselor until like the very end when they have to sign papers and all that stuff. Yes, you could ask your counselor advice for it, but they're going to tell you go do all the steps and then come to me. They're not going to help you until you do all that. So make sure you go on your college campuses thing. Oh, I literally forgot to point this out. And this is like such a big thing. Maybe I should have written stuff down. Hi guys, um, I'm sitting here editing this and I realized that I had too much energy when I was saying that dual enrollment's free. So I'm just gonna say it right now <laughs> with less energy because like that was a little scary in the video, but dual enrollment is free guys. It's paid for, it is funded by the state of Georgia. So when you're taking these classes, take them seriously because if you, I think if you fail a dual enrollment class, you can't take another one you can't take the same dual enrollment class if you fail it you'd have to go back to the high school and take it and so my big tip to you is take it seriously don't think it's a joke don't think it's like high school and don't do dual enrollment just to get out of school early a lot of people do that a lot of people are like oh my gosh Lexi you get out early every single day like that must be nice of course it's nice Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays I literally just go home like I don't have class I just go home after high school and I'm done but I have to do my homework i have to stay on top of things and it's not just like me going home and just playing around like that's not what is happening stay on top of that um i think if you withdraw from a class in college if you drop or like withdraw from a class at dual enrollment it'll show up on your high school transcript as a 69 and it'll show up as um 
a, like a withdrawal on your like college transcript which isn't bad if it shows up as a withdrawal on your college but it's 69 on your high school so please take everything seriously um don't take dual enrollment lightly a lot of people were asking me those questions is it easy all of this stuff the requirements going through it how i do it if you guys have any more questions feel free to dm me or text me or whatever i literally get 50,000 questions a day a whole like day and i sit there and i'm like listen i am not your counselor i'm not the website i'm not the queen of dual enrollment i don't know everything okay i really don't so um yeah but i really hope that this video helped you guys because i wanted to do a video and just get it out there for you guys so you guys know like what dual enrollment is how i'm doing it um so yeah uh thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this once again if you have questions dm me i am free to answer them and thank you guys for watching like and subscribe bye